Hello everybody, this video is going to look at a jobs data feed API. This is typically what recruiters would use and recruiters, there are many of them, big ones, Monster, Read, Indeed and so on and obviously the smaller ones. Now this is quite a lucrative industry. If you look, if you do a search, how much commission do recruitment agencies get paid. Now this is uh, a result from the UK and it says standard recruitment costs tend to range between 15% and 20% of a candidate's first annual salary. But this can go as high as 30% for hard to fill positions. So if you imagine a recruiter places a senior Python developer for 60,000 pounds, 60,000 pounds at 20% is <laughs> 12,000 pounds. So 12,000 pounds, what's that in dollars? Um, 12,000, oh, it's probably something like $15,000. $16,000, so quite a lot of money. And this costs from the starter, which has got uh, 10,000 job download credits per month, data from popular job boards, normalized location, job title, and language fields, API access, access to last what one month job data. Okay. So really what I want to do here is look at the features and just talk about the features that this has, and we'll look at the GitHub page for Jobs Picker, and we'll discuss how this might have been designed and look at the uh, look at the various specifications. So we got if you pay a bit more, you get um, hundred thousand job downloads per month. Company logo. Here we go. This is interesting. ML inferred fields for department name salary. Filter for remote jobs. Thus, <laughs> if you've watched a couple of my recent videos, and obviously in the past two years with what's gone on in, on in the world, remote jobs are probably much more, it's a much more searched, it's, it's a much more used job filter, I would say, a search filter. Access to last two months job data, access to last three months and so on as it goes up. Um, wow, £600 a month. But there you go, you've only got a, place one candidate per month if you're a recruiter and it's paying for itself, isn't it? Um, access to aggregation API. So there's three APIs altogether. Um, so what this is doing, if we just distill it down, it's web scraping various sites. And it's using machine learning to probably clean up the data. And let's just, um, if I just, skip ahead a little bit on this video and let's there we go collecting cleansing enriching so etl basically and what they're doing is they're passing out job title description date location and they're using machine learning so presumably they're using some sort of text nlp um and yeah Precious insights with data easily and smartly. So if you go up here, you've got, which is going to be of interest to us, API documentation. Now, as I say, writing a scraper for jobs was something I did um, just over a year ago. And I was scraping the results to for my own use, uh, not for public use or for resale before I get sued. Um, then what I did was I saved the jobs to database which was actually uh, I think I was using MySQL at the time and one of the things I noticed that this provides as you just saw was the historical jobs expired and jobs from the past month and so on so if you want to look at expired what you're going to need to do is scrape the results for today scrape the results for tomorrow and then you're going to need to compare the difference. So you're going to need to keep storing historical data and get, it's going to grow and grow and grow, but that's not a problem. What we've got here, job search API, search for jobs based on various criteria, expired jobs. So 
that's what what the reason why that's um kind of like an additional or an upgrade is because they've got to store much more data and obviously if they're paying for aws or google cloud or whatever they <laughs> If that's going to be readily accessible data as opposed to archive data, then that's going to cost them more to pay for the cloud service provider. Aggregation API, get aggregated counts based on the query given. Yes, yeah, so I believe they do trends as well. And um, yeah, search API, good. Examples, let's have a look at examples. So job search API, what I'm going to do is this video is just going to be like an introduction. In the next video, we'll actually, I'll sign up for the API and I'll do a demo on, demo on how to use it. Um, <laughs> good old Python developer and job title. So um, yeah, there's also a fork on GitHub and you can download the API blueprint. Let me make that a bit bigger. Um, if you try and download it, it downloads as, an, as a .apib file extension and you won't find anything to open it. But if you go to their GitHub page, you can view it here. And 3,077 lines of notes and documentation. And what if I go back to the end, um, these are kind of the sectors and the departments that they categorize their data with. So fairly standard. Um, Get back up to the top. So API rate limit, that's always something which uh, interests me. Um, rate limiting to safeguard against bursts of incoming traffic based on resource access, blah, blah, blah. Um, requests per hour. Yeah, hundreds to 5,000. Any request beyond that given rate will give status code 429. Anybody who's tried to scrape uh, Amazon or something like that will be familiar with the error 429. Rather than error 404, 429, as we, let me just, uh, let's just read the uh, full spec on that. I'm sure we all get it, but let's just see the uh, actual full definition. Uh, not 428, 429. <laughs> How to fix error 429. <laughs> go away, come back later. <laughs> there we go, anyway. It will also specify when they can send another request. So, yeah. Obviously, with APIs, the more you pay, the, the the more the uh, more requests you can make in a given amount of time. So what we'll do is wrap it up here. I'm going to put a link down below if you're interested or if you're a recruitment agency. If you would like me to do a proof of concept for you, um, we can sign up for a demo API key and yeah. Get in contact, give, drop me a line in the comments. But I've had um, a couple of recruiters, particularly with very, very locked down sites, should we say, um, want to kind of scrape data before. But this, this looks a little bit more sophisticated and obviously I've used some machine learning in it as well. So it'd be interesting to actually do a proof of concept demo with this. And if anybody's kind of a recruiter or wanting a project and you don't want to just scrape data and get loads of errors and fields in the wrong place and, you know, um, get an Excel sheet from some, <laughs> some code where it puts the job description in the salary box and you got you got a big Excel sheet with lots of things in the wrong columns. Uh, it would be interesting to test this and I'd be happy to do this as proof of concept. So yeah, Jobs Picker, um, there we go, jobspicker.com. We'll look at the GitHub page next time when we actually do a example. And in the meantime, um, yeah, there we go. Jobs Picker is one all-in-one solution for jobs data. So automatically collects jobs data from company career web pages and popular job portals such as Indeed. Monster, LinkedIn, Glassdoor, across the globe. We monitor over 3 million jobs per month and use artificial intelligence to filter out duplicate postings. That's really important. If any of you are looking for jobs, you'll notice that um, 
yeah, duplicates of nightmare. You can go through several pages of jobs and you'll keep seeing the same job, but it just keeps being listed under a different location, especially if it's remote. So if it's a remote job, they'll list it as Birmingham, Manchester, London, Bristol, and it's the same job. And it's remote anyway. So <laughs> anyway, that's, I'm not, it's, right. Companies, ed tech, HR tech, job board, industry to harness the power of machine learning algorithms powered by prompt clouds analytics solution to find job postings data. Yeah, so there we go. This has just been a little introduction. I say, if anybody would like me to do a proof of concept, I can do that. Um, schedule a demo. I'm not going to do that right now, but uh, yeah, there you go. Say, so if you'd rather have uh, me kind of do a demo with the API and just kind of uh, actually have some working code and just see what it does, then get in touch. Um, data overview. There we go. So if, you, if you're curious as to what sort of, um, below the basic fields that are collected is available from the source websites we monitor. So I, I'm not a recruiter myself, but I suspect uh, those are very familiar to you if you are. Rich data points, the following fields, data enrichment points, have you sliced, dice? so, yeah, that's all the filters, data delivery options, API is a primary mode for delivering data, the API, so JSON format, so you can export actually to, straight to Amazon as your Google Cloud storage, or you can have a big CSV file, so if, if all this is just, beyond you or you don't you, you're not interested but you actually just want if you're a recruiter you're not interested in the code but you just want the output then yeah get in touch and we can help you thanks for watching